So be ready. All right, uh, quickly, a few things about me. My name is Bogomil. Most people call me Bogo because it's easy to remember. I say, buy one, get one. Um, I live in Prague. I speak a bit Czech, someone asked. Um, but I'm, uh, yeah, I'm from, uh, I'm from Bulgaria originally, born and raised there. Um, I do a lot of things, but here I'm to talk about, you know, InfoSec, cybersecurity, threat modeling. I call myself a security champion. I try to um, embed security in any possible way in the offline and the online world. Um, I do love heavy metal music a lot. I, yeah. Um, I uh, actually teach people how to be better humans and how to think about their mental health through heavy metal music. Some videos are available on YouTube. Go and check them out or invite me to your company. I'll be happy to come and do a workshop for you. Um, since we're in an open source conference, I do contribute to Thunderbird. Currently, I'm part of the Thunderbird Council uh, for this year. I do a lot of mapping for the OpenStreetMap. I contribute also to Fedora and Mozilla in some cases. Um, so um, what is threat modeling? Because we are here to talk about threat modeling. I will not going to read all of these, and probably you know some of it. Um, but actually, it's basically answering, answering four questions. What are we planning to do? What can go wrong? And we'll go with examples. Uh, what are we going to do about it? And at the end, did we actually did a good job preventing some of those threats? So um, there was an audio version here. I embedded my own AI assistant into this. But unfortunately, there is no audio. So I skipped that. So um, we call this um, myself and the AI assistant threat modeling for humans. So I believe I see some humans in the audience. Um, so what are we planning to do? The first thing is, you know, hey, I'm planning to go to a trip in Greenland, for example, a really beautiful place. Oh, that's the thing that I'm going to do. So the problem is that, you know, hey, I have an apartment. I have a cute dog, not this one, unfortunately, uh, but cuter, way cuter than this one. Um, I have some plants. Uh, okay, let's not talk about me, but you know, person that because my wife is here, so she will see some flaws in the in the process. Um, we need to do something about the plants because you know the trip to Greenland is good for like two weeks or three weeks. Uh, the dog cannot survive. We cannot give her to a shelter or a hotel because it's really expensive. So. What can, what can go wrong with, with this whole situation? So we need to do something about the plants. We need to do something about the dog. What is it that we can do? We can ask our new neighbor that just moved into our neighborhood to, to help us with, with the plants. Um, maybe he'll be good enough to come and you know, take a look at our you know, plants and the dog. Or we can leave the door open so the dog can go out and you know, do some stuff. For people that cannot see, I'm showing a picture of a raccoon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the plants, you know, can get their moist out from, from, the, wind, from the weather, not weather, the, the air inside, outside. Or, you know, we can supply um, food uh, through, you know, all of those ordering apps to, to the dog. And again, I'm showing a dog looking at some branded um, food. So, yeah, I mean, we can do all of this, right? We need to go to a Greenland. To Greenland, we need to do a lot of things, uh, but we need to take care of the plants, we need to take care of the dog, and some other things as well. So, um, this could end up badly in many ways. Our apartment can look like this when we come back. Um, but, yeah, who, who knows? So, what are we going to do about it? Um, one of the things is, you know, we can decide that it's too risky to go to vacation now because, you know, hey, there are some factors that prevent us to, to go right now. We need to find a hotel, for example, for the dog or do something differently. 
or find someone who can trust, someone you know that we know from a long time, but they will come in, say, a week or two to take care of the dog and the plants. Or, of course, we can take the dog with us and put the plants in the bathtub. Is it good or not? Or something else that comes to your mind. Right, those, those are mitigations that we can do. Um, and if we come back from vacation and the dog is still alive and the plants are still alive, maybe we did a good job. All right, so this is, this is basic threat modeling that we all do naturally. This is what we're wired as humans. So right now, I'm sure that 50% of you think, you know, hey, this is a boring collection. Where is the nearest, nearest exit? It's over there. So yeah, we do that unconsciously. But why, why I'm talking to you? I mean, you know all of this, right? It, it's, it's the normal process, process that human brain actually does. So um, let's talk about the software threat modeling. Uh, this is a copyright picture. Um, yeah, it's called the uh, HTTP cats, very amazing website. Um, so what are, what are the errors that we do when you know, we are wired as humans naturally to do a threat modeling in different situation? But when we start doing a software threat modeling for the work that we do, we actually fail badly, very badly. So there are a lot of errors. The first one that actually I, uh, not I, but we identified was that we don't our own work. So the, most of the teams that I work with, you know, they deliver something and they don't care about security at all even though it says security is important, security is part of our development life cycle, yada, yada, yada. But there is no one who actually will go and say, did we did a good job, actually? Did we, did we thought about security? So how, how can we fix that? Um, we're not the family at work, right? Let's, let's be honest. But we still should care for the product that we deliver to the end consumers because it's, it's their safety, it's our reputation, um, and um, how many of you actually survived a, a breach, data breach, in your own companies? No one, I'm okay, one, you say one, okay. All right, so um, it's really bad. That means you need to work 24 hours, that means you need, not you, but company needs to pay a lot of money. And it's really bad time if something bad happens for you personally. So we need to start caring more. Um, the next problem is that only one person in the whole organization or a team or a business unit, whatever you call it, is doing the threat modeling. Um, this is bad for many angles. First is because um, I found very useful to bring in people together, as we are all, all now, one team for the moment, um, to look at the threat model, to look at the, what can go wrong and can help us build a better threat modeling. The problem is that, you know, no one knows you know, if you ask people, hey, let's do a threat model, I say, okay, let's do a threat model. But how do we do it? And I start explaining, you know, hey, you, did, do, you, did, you do this, do that, and then, it, you know, end up at the moment that they don't know something, and they are afraid, and they say, okay, this is not for me. So um, we need to have a better onboarding experience. So for that, I actually created a really nice workshop uh, that involves a lot of beer, because, you know, hey, we're in the Czech Republic. <laughs> and involves a dog uh, because um, you really, as a human, m most of you probably, they really, we really don't like to kill the dog. So we need to protect the dog as well. Uh, and I did a lot of threat modeling exercises with different teams and most of the time we identified 40% more threats working as a group than actually working alone. 
Um, the second error is that we are not aligned. Uh, the threat modeling is not aligned with the way we work. Uh, how many of you are working in an agile way? All right, cool. What about waterfall? Ooh, awesome. So um, in the, one of my previous companies, uh, which survived two breaches, um, we, we were working in agile way, but actually we did the threat modeling once in two years. So we develop a software every sprint, right? Not, not a lot, adding features, new tests, new, new, we're opening you know, new attack surfaces, API points, but we do the threat modeling. Um, you know, from time to time, when something happens or someone asks us. So this is the problem that is not aligned with the current way we work. Um, what, is, what is the thing that we can do in this case? We can include the delta of the features that we de developed into your sprint, so you do small threat modeling each, each sprint or each two sprints or something like that. Um, you can follow the trends and define the triggers, uh, that means if you do a threat model, you will see later what is the thing that will make you the trigger in this case, what will make you to do the threat modeling again. Um, that could be, hey, um, you're entering in a new market, for example, uh, you work with the government agencies now, and you know that government agencies are currently every time under attack from you know, hackers or bad actors. So if your software, for example, is not um, exposed to a government agency, maybe you need a different threat model. But when something changes, you need to do a threat model even on the same, uh, same code base. And the other thing interesting is we now work from home, we work from the office, we work like a hybrid mode. The current threat modeling that we do, um, they are not aligned the, the principles and the processes and everything, they are not aligned with this unique way of working. The third error is that we are using tool before we know how to do threat modeling. That was, you know, again, an example from a company that I worked with. So we said, you know, security, the CISO said, we need to do threat modeling, all right? We bought a very famous tool. You know, we, we draw, you know, the diagrams, we hit the button, and then uh, people said, no, okay. By, it, it generates like thousands of threads, thousands of artifacts, and the people, they don't know what to do with them. So first you need to understand the basics, and then we need to go through uh, the exercises. And yeah, um, use the tools. The tools are good. The tools are amazing. Uh, there are automation tools as well. Uh, it's just a random, uh, random image, so there is no information there. But use them when actually you learn the process, you know how, to, uh, how the tools, tools can help you. All right, so um, I talked to a lot of people. Um, it's not clear here, but you know, uh, I talked to developers, I talked to CISO organization, I talked to product security, I talked to the red teams, I talked to the business, I talked to the sales. Um, what is the, what, are, what, what, what they see as a problem right now uh, in terms of threat modeling. And then, oh, wrong button. And then I created something called uh, Protector. It's, it's, a, it's a way on how step by step, together, the whole team, we can um, fix the problems. So we'll go quickly, really quickly, through this exercise because you know we don't have a lot of time. Um, so it's, it's a basic process. The first one is gathering your team together. So, hello team. So happy that you're here with me today on our threat modeling session. Um, the, the, that's the first part. So we are here and you're most likely willing to help. I can give you beers later. <clears throat> so then um, I created a low fidelity diagram, simple diagram of our system that we need to protect. Um, since uh, I, I I mentioned before that uh, I use an example with a, uh, with a beer yard uh, and a dog. So here I go, we have a bartender um, and in, we have a bar, we have like two simple elements here. The first is the beer tap where the beer goes. 
Um, we have a, a here we have a fridge and the fridge we have the beer keg. Um, sorry for you know drawing it so ugly. That's why I use uh, online tools. Uh, so we have one boundary to protect. That's the bar. Then we have uh, outside of the bar for security reasons. We have uh, a box with the keys. Those keys are for for the bar, and the keys here also belong to unlock the electricity uh, over there because during, due to regulation requirements the electricity must be outside of of the bar and we have you know this boundary to protect here the dock and the keys and the third boundary of course is uh, to have a uh, uh, to protect it as whole then the third one is uh, to connect those elements so the bartender goes Hits the, the lever, the beer goes, you know, hoop, hoop, hoop. Uh, in this time, we have a pipe here that goes to, to the fridge, uh, then goes back here, and that's as simple as that. Um, so the next, the next thing is to start thinking about um, the attackers. So who would like to attack our amazing bar and the dock? Um, we usually, sorry? Yeah, yeah, good one. A drunk. You said drunk, drunk person, right? Yes. All right. So we have drunk. Um, what else? Who else? A criminal. A criminal. All right. <laughs> so our mission, our mission is to serve cold beer to our customers. So who else could, could attack us? Religious, Religious people. Let's say you don't supposed to drink. Yeah. All right. Who religious PPL. Okay, let's stop here because there are more. So this is how it goes. You know, uh, it can be but the bartender, of course, because she hasn't paid third month in a row. Right? She's an attacker as well. It can be uh, it can be in some of the in some of the uh, use cases we had there was an asteroid as well as an attacker. Uh, okay, so we have quickly because you know we don't have a lot of time. Um, the next thing is to identify the assets we need to protect. So I'll just go quickly. Everything here needs protection. We have uh, the tap, we have the fridge, the beer. Uh, maybe we need to protect the bartender, of course. Uh, we need to protect the pipes. We need to protect the dock. We need to protect the keys. We need to protect the infrastructure here that goes from electricity and et cetera, et cetera. So I, for the next two, three minutes, I would like to, you to think and to shout what could go wrong. So if a drunk, a criminal or a religious person can be. Okay. All right, let's do that. Competitor, all right, let's go with competitor. Good. Thank you, we need to be politically correct. Competitor. Yeah, because there is another, thank you. There is another um, bar next door that really want to serve beer as well. And of course, uh, the computer misbehaving so let's go fast imagine no be be creative be wild what could go wrong who wants to start first the loss, of electricity. loss of electricity i will not write it but you know just think lost loss of electricity all right the the Ooh, but the, okay sorry the repeat the question Ah, all right. So if you're not present here, you're missing out. Um, so it was um, uh, that loss of electricity. It was the drunk person can, you know, trip uh, in the pipelines and break them. What, what was else? Sorry? Exactly, insulting bartender. Because if you insult her, she will not serve a beer, she might quit, and then who will be serving beer? All right, more, 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 more. 
Yes, the environment can be damaged. See, something that I actually cannot think about. Thank you. The beer can go bad. It is happening, right? Actually, I had one bad beer in the Czech Republic. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, a new law is not prohibited drinking. Maybe we can serve non-alcoholic beer in this case, right? Yeah. All right, so this is goes and goes and goes. Um, and in, with one of the groups, we actually were able to identify more than 140 things that can happen. Then the next thing that we need to do is to try to see, uh, to group them, to see whether some of those threats are similar or not. And to, and to group them by, you know, we having a threat, saying uh, loss of electricity, loss of electricity, so, uh, so we can call this um, asset one, and say, you know, that links to the asset one, so that risk of loss of electricity links to asset one, that need protect that infrastructure here, and we say it's uh, most likely is the competitor that will try to do something like that. So we have uh, what could happen, uh, what asset could be damaged in this case, and who would likely to be uh, working with us, uh, not working, but attacking us. And the next thing is to, because you know, as when you go like this, of course, with the software mind, later, you will have um, a lot of combinations like that. So which one needs to go um, first? So the thing is that there is in this process or a visual flow, there is something called a risk matrix. Uh, it's a, yeah, a impact probability matrix saying, you know, how likely is this to happen? Someone to cut off the electricity and if they actually achieve that, what will be the impact on us? So the impact in this case will be high, but you know that it's not so likely to be happen, to happen because you have a uh, really good protection in this case, and uh, the, the probability of this to happen is very low. And you keep doing that in uh, all of the cases, and then when you have uh, your top four or five risks, then you start thinking uh, about mitigation plans. So you know that your competitor, in this case, uh, can cut off your electricity infrastructure, uh, and that will end up in a loss of, um, loss of electricity that will go directly into malfunctioning fridge. That means our mission to serve cold beer will be dead. So what is the one thing that comes to your mind to do for mitigation of this uh, threat? Sorry? This or benzene. Okay. All right. This is a generator to mitigate that. All right. Yeah. So this is, you know, the, the idea to, to create a plan as a team, what you need to do um, in case that happens. And then, of course, to um, create a way to add it into, come on, all right, uh, into your Jira or whatever you use um, with, you know, who is responsible actually for buying this diesel generator and by when they need to buy it. Um, and then the last thing that, you know, that process includes is um, to have a, those triggers. What needs to happen, you know, from your point of view when, uh, for you as a team, thank you. Uh, ooh, 10 minutes, amazing, so I can talk more. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll shut up now. Um, what needs to happen as, you know, from your point of view as a team that you need to revisit, of course, the whole threat modeling. Okay, so I'll, I'll go quickly um, because, you know, this is, you know, the, the whole concept for the beer and the dog is to introduce people uh, that never heard of threat modeling before or have some knowledge of, about threat modeling but not consistent knowledge, not end-to-end -end knowledge, you know, how everything works. Because the, the, I think, yeah, I have the outputs later. 
Uh, but the, the whole um, uh, framework uh, includes a thread catalog inside that you're actually ready to use. Uh, one of them is, you know, Stride, is by Microsoft. Uh, uh, there's another from F-Secure, it's on privacy. There is another one on ethical design because the threat modeling should include more and more, uh, not just, you know, the security implications. Um, oops, sorry. So the next one is, um, you know, this is a, a real project, uh, please don't take pictures, um, of, a <laughs> of a real real product that we did uh, threat modeling to. And the main idea is, you know, you go to the threat catalog, pick up the, start it from, from the top and say, hey, how likely is an attacker uh, to squat on a random port? You'll say, yeah, that, that, that actually can happen. And you put it uh, in, for example, somewhere here when actually can happen. Um, all right, so oh, hoo -hoo. what else? Uh, risk metrics are set, not all of the risks are, are equal. You have a way uh, and a process on how to, to do basic risk management. Of course, this is very basic. There is there are a lot, a lot of information on Mitre, for example, on how to do proper risk management for, for threats. Oh, also, we did this, you know, assets to protect. You have a database of what assets you need to protect. Uh, if you have a, um, a system in your company that actually um, record the assets in your company, uh, you can, you know, get the information from there. Uh, you can go in the attacker personas and triggers. We, we covered all of this. Um, and the output of the whole exercise is actually a full picture of your security landscape for your, of course, your own um, scope of, uh, of the project. Uh, threat report with risk and deadlines for the product security team because um, the consumer of the report that you will generate at the end of the threat modeling session uh, will go to probably your security team, red team, or any other that will be reviewing the output and giving a recommendation and their, their input on uh, um, how likely uh, something of, of this can happen from their point of view. And of course, you have a mitigation plan for majority of your high risk items. Uh, you have the people in, who are responsible for uh, doing something for those threats. That's part of the mitigation plan. And then um, you can have fun from time to time. Um, since we're an open source conference, this, all of this that I talk about, it's uh, open source. Uh, it's under a Creative Commons license. It's in, in the Codeberg repo. Oops, sorry. Uh, in Codeberg rec repo, you can go there, uh, download it. Uh, currently, it contains a Miro template, but it's, um, uh, it's, you just click it and load it, uh, but it's, uh, you know, adaptable to other system. Step-by-step uh, -step guide of making the threat modeling together, something that we did, but of course more with more details and specifically focused on the software uh, threat modeling. Um, and uh, of course, uh, there is a, uh, uh, contains a way of working together. Is it done? Okay, amazing. And of course, uh, there is a workshop uh, like this uh, for your team. Um, with the dog, actually the workshop could, uh, it's uh, something like uh, hour and a half and goes through the dog exercise and through um, <clears throat> doing a soft, a soft threat modeling on, on a tiny software project. Okay, so two very useful resources, threatmodelingmanifesto.org, uh, if you don't know it, um, contains a lot of do's and a lot of don'ts on how to do threat modeling. Uh, the second one is the yeah, privacy guides there. Uh, personal threat modeling, if you're, if you're a journalist or any high risk, pro um, thank you, any high risk profession, uh, you can do a threat modeling for yourself. So you're going and investigating a criminal, what this criminal can do to you in case they try to attempt that, what is the thing that you can do? So this is, uh, perfectly um, <coughs> uh, ready for that. Uh, and this is it. I mean, I had two more slides, but there is no audio. So uh, um, feel free to connect with me if you have a Fediverse account or, um, you know, 
if you're still using LinkedIn, uh, please don't, um, but connect me there. Thank you very much, and I think we have 30 seconds for one question. <laughs> 30 seconds for, yeah? You. Yeah. So that's a lot of yeah. Um, the question was, how do we convince the management? Just repeating it for the streaming. How do we convince the management that threat modeling is important? Uh, because this might be very time-consuming. And yes, it is very time-consuming. Um, so this is the the role where the security organization came in place. So I work with the security team. We have, you know, as I call it, security champions program. People that go and say, we cannot release, uh, you know, um, product online without doing a threat modeling. Then, you know, we need to decide, and you as a team, you need to decide how much involvement you need to do. Because if you spend, you know, a really, really a large amount of man hours uh, without any result, um, or, you know, a really huge threat model, then maybe it's not worth it. It's just, you know, the, the right time of finding the balance. I mean, there is no, like, silver bullet saying, you know, hey, this is that you need to talk to the management. Most of the management, they understand why security is important, and it's about, you know, the trade-off. Sometimes really don't have time for, um, for security stuff because, you know, business requires to go without the security stuff, let's be honest, right? Um, but in most of the cases, we need to find a balance together. I hope that answers your question so-so. All right. Well, I really like to invite the security team into the threat modeling session so they can give their input. But sometimes it's not possible because in some companies that I work with, we had a two-person um, security team and they really would like to see the output of the model to go with the team quickly for 30 minutes through all of the cases. Uh, all of the, you know, um, threats they identified, you know, the risks and the scenarios, and give their input. That's, you know, again, a matter of timing. But I really would like, and, you know, I invite all the time security, product security especially, people into the threat modeling uh, exercise. Good question. Thank you. That's really important. Yeah, last question, right? Yeah, yeah. The question was in the risk matrix if there is any way of actually adding extra information about, you know, the threat uh, based on the CVE or any other. Um, thank you. I, I see you at the red sign. Um, um, in, in this case, no. But as I said, if you visit the Codeberg repo, uh, there is a link to the Meter website. They have extensive um, work on how uh, one can do a real um, uh, risk analysis based on, you know, the, the other uh, uh, inputs like the, the one you mentioned. And this is just basic saying, you know, is this going to happen? Yes. How likely is this to happen? Likely. If it happens, what will happen? You know, boom. So that means we need to go and take a look at it first. All right. Thank you. We don't have an, a lot of time. And uh, be more secure. Think about threat modeling and be happy. Thank you very much.